Couch to my left, it's my great pleasure to welcome Itagaki-san, legendary game designer now with Valhalla Game Studios, to talk about Devil's Third. Itagaki-san, welcome. And joining him are Scott Ricci from Nintendo and Danny Bilson, also from Valhalla Games. You guys, so psyched to have you here. We're going to look at some Devil's Third. It's going to be pretty nasty from what I gather, <laughs> right? Pretty fun? All right. Uh, so we're going to start off with a trailer, I think, so people can get an idea. But Itagaki-san, what, yeah, what kind of, what do you want to do here with Devil's Third? What, what kind of experience are you trying to c uh, create for the player? Devil's Third, how did you make it? Hmm, this is a shooter, but it's an action element. It's a Ninja Gaiden or a Hack and Slash element. デッドライブのようなベアナックルの格闘ですね。ま、そういったものをさらにマックスにしましてね、で、全く新しいものを作りたいと思いました。So uh, 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 what we're going for here is a modern shooter with lots of different action elements. You've got the hack and slash swordplay that you might find in the Ninja Gaiden series, as well as the, as well as the kind of bare knuckle brawling melee that you would see in a Dead or Alive game. And Put all that together and crank it up as much as you can. That's casting the net pretty wide. The melee attacks and the gun fighting. Uh, I, that, it's always tricky to balance those things. I'm excited to take a look at the gameplay demo you guys have for us. But first, let's roll a trailer of Devil's Third, and we're going to get a look at sort of uh, what the game setting is and what the, the tone is. Hi. Sound good? Yeah, trailer on us, yeah. All right. Uh, so that should be coming down the pipe. Here we go. If you want to give us any background on what we're seeing here, feel free to chime in at any point, gentlemen. Oh, that was just your sizzle reel for the studio? Oh, that was looking cool. I was like, wait a minute. We're on a ship here? Viking time? Oh, no. Now here's the cranking it up to as much as possible stuff you were talking about before. Aircraft fell from the sky. Passenger trains collided. The uh, Earth is not doing so well. Okay. All right. So competitive multiplayer, a big part of Devil's Third, and explosive as well. It seems. Well, you you know that sort of that that view of the the Midwest of the of the map. Right. It looked like you had some sort of territory control right. going. Right. Uh -huh. Territories, and there's a whole owning the map component to this game. It works on many many levels. The shooting dudes in the head level, of course, is uh, one of the more important ones. And there's more uh, along those lines. <laughs> uh, so we're seeing a lot of shooting here, a lot of uh, competitive action. Is this? The same kind of pace of action that we see in the single player campaign as well? Single player is not the same action. Yes, that's correct. Here you see the ability for clans and teams to earn and unlock not just customization, but base units as, as well. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly having a fun sense of humor with the different outfits here. I like it. How could you point a gun at a kitty face mask? <laughs> I'm sorry. These guys are throwing fruit? What is yes. going on here? In this mode, each player has to get their fruit in the blender <laughs> and defend against other players getting uh, their fruit in the blender. Not to mention what happens when a player winds up in the blender. Oh, a player can <laughs> wind up in the blender, of course. Why would? Why not? Uh, that person has the rainbow chicken power up? Uh, yeah. Chicken power up got hot enough, man. It seems very formidable. I'm, this is, honestly, it's been a long time since I looked at the trailer for a multiplayer game and burst out laughing. <laughs> I like it. I like the <laughs> attitude. <laughs> and there's that melee you were talking about. Yee gets. So how many players are facing off in these conflicts? Uh, 16. 16? Yeah. Nasty. And some of them are dressed as ninjas, and some of them are dressed as soldiers. Ninja no fuku to gunji no fuku, iroiro arimasu. Yeah. Yes, lots of variety. So it seems it seems like you guys, you know, 
having fun is a lot of par a part of this game. Not just the player having fun playing it, but also you guys having fun with video games and the video game conventions and different elements that, that go into them. That's right. It looks like we definitely had a good time. Yeah, I try to remind everybody as often as I can not to take it too seriously and keep it fun. <laughs> and I'm sure that a lot of people who are watching it are thinking, what is this? But we're happy to create those kind of mysterious questions in their minds. I think it builds anticipation. Yeah, you know, the, it, it's much better to look at a game and think, what is going on, than to look at a game and feel like you know everything that's happening. Because where's the mystery? <laughs> of course. All right, so that was a look at the multiplayer trailer. And of course, that's this game is coming only to the Wii U. Uh, I think we're going to try to jump into actual gameplay of the single player campaign now. Yes, let's do it. Uh, so, can you set it up for us? Where are, what is the setting for what we're going to be seeing in the campaign? Uh, so yeah, we can go ahead and explain a little bit afterwards. Alright. Here we see a guy uh, not exactly in a regulation uniform. Yes, he's actually a former prisoner. And why is he shooting the people, other than the obvious reason that they are trying to shoot him? So after the fall of the USSR, a lot of these former Soviet military members who couldn't go anywhere else banded together and formed, formed a terrorist organization called SOD, or, or School of Democracy. School of Democracy. That's right. That seems a little misleading. I don't know. democracy <laughs> 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 で、その <laughs> 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 has destroyed a lot of communication satellites with a debris field called the Kessler Syndrome and also ignited EMPs that have taken out the electrical grid all over the world trying to destroy the current world order and replace it with their own. So that means no one's able to use any of their electronics, cell phones, UAV, things like that. Uh, and in fact, no modern weaponry can be used, and so the world has to resort to these infantry-level skirmishes. Uh, which, of course, involve giant swords. Absolutely. <laughs> well, here we see some melee combat in action, and uh, what, you know, Itagaki-san, you obviously have a long history of melee combat. Dead or Alive and Ninja Gaiden. Uh, what do you, when you are taking it on for Devil's Third, what is the feeling you want to create uh, and how is it sort of different from what you've done in the past? So you might have noticed a little earlier that Ivan threw his weapon to kill an enemy. And now he has no sword, so he's engaging barehand and stole a sword and killed that enemy with his own sword. He's got a sword now. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> You know, things don't always go well for you when you try to steal swords <laughs> from guys with guns. 
あ、<笑> So yeah, you can definitely steal enemies' weapons. We're gonna take a look at the next stage also. What kind of uh, you know we saw we saw the player uh, get vanquished by enemies, but we also saw the player killing a lot of enemies. And what kind of uh, balance do you want to strike here between you want the player to have a lot of fun when playing, but you also want to make it a little bit challenging? What's what's a bigger priority for you? どういうふうに何度バランスしようと思っていますでしょうか。まあ、10分には何回ぐらい え、ディフィカルティに関しては今までよりえ、しっかりしてます。Yeah, we we like to look at the game from a learning curve perspective. So long as players can stay on that curve, we think it's a lot of fun. But if they start to fall off or if it's too steep, then you're running into problems. We want to make sure it's an enjoyable experience and we're paying a lot of attention to that this time. そのあたりはね、あの、任天堂と一緒に仕事してるっていうのも大きいよね。and our partnership with Nintendo has been especially fruitful in that particular area. We found that we've been able to learn a lot from them and their expertise on that. Well, I'm interested to ask you about that because uh, Devil's Third is a Wii U exclusive. And so when a game is coming to the Wii U, you have the capabilities of the Wii U at your fingertips. You have the Wii U gamepad with the motion sensing and the stylus interaction, the touchpad. Uh, are there ways that Devil's Third is using these uh, capabilities of the Wii U? Devil's Third is a Wii U player, do you use DRC or motion control? Yes, I can use DRC. I can use the infantry and the infantry on the ground. Or, the infant 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 on the ground. So we are in fact building elements for use on the gamepad. Battlefield communication is going to be a really important part of multiplayer especially because infantry needs to share information and communicate. And so all across North America you're going to find these ground bases and these forces need to communicate with one another to make their efforts successful. え、爆弾だけじゃなくて、プロパガンダのビラを撒きましたよね。so part of the war effort is these various factions have to recruit people to join their side to, to fight and defend themselves against other factions. Now that sort of, uh, the battlefield communication, the different factions, Danny, I think that gets at what you were mentioning uh, during the multiplayer trailer, that metagame of territory control. So is that a theme that connects the single player and multiplayer campaign? Yeah, well, both games absolutely exist in this same world of uh, post technology world, which allows the most important thing in the base of this game is range combat, sword combat, melee, and we haven't seen it yet, but the stuff he's famous for is the way the control feels and the movement of the player up walls. Uh, the multiplayer game, honestly, is the only game I've ever jumped onto a friend off a rooftop and cut off his head, and it's a very unique experience and absolutely hilarious, ultimately, and it's over the top nature and sort of parody of violence and, and, and violent art. That sounds like a pretty good way to, to acquit yourself in a multiplayer match. It really to, is. You know. I mean, we played this game for a very long time back at the studio in Los Angeles. And uh, the laugh, laughing, fun, um, more than the intense competition is combined with a lot of just good times and good humor by the nature of the mechanics he's given us to play with here. Uh, speaking of mechanics, I notice occasionally when he's taking cover like this, <laughs> instead of 
reloading his gun. He's just lighting up and having a quick cigarette. Well, sometimes <laughs> he know. takes a drink, too. Tobacco You'll see. Like oh, sometimes you know. he drinks yeah. as well. Yeah, there's a lot of vices that have to be consumed <laughs> in the uh, rest moments of combat. You got to keep your energy up somehow, I guess. Yeah, uh, you know those crazy terrorists. terrorists. <laughs> Enrico Tomato strategy is there. Oh, uh, that was a particularly brutal sort of slowdown. Oh, actually, now sorry. Let's switch to the weapon. Let's talk about weapons because the tomahawk, obviously, very, you know, built to be thrown. The katana, maybe not so much. But will you be finding a lot of different weapons in the course of the level, or do you have to decide what weapons you want from the beginning? So yes, he can certainly throw the tomahawk. Yeah, that was nice. And this is, you know... <laughs> I love it. It's not, you know... It, it, so many games like this with a cover mechanic, you just want to sit behind cover and pop out and shoot and pop out and shoot, but running at a dead sprint, sliding and then beating the crap out of a guy, that's pretty fun too. Yeah, you certainly do want to run around, but there are definitely some times when you need cover. Oh, well, and sometimes when cover is apparently being blown up. Do you guys, uh, with a, a lot of the emphasis on being over the top and having a lot of explosions, do you do a lot of environmental destructibility and stuff? Yeah, you're definitely going to see a lot of destructible environments, especially in multiplayer where people can customize their own fortresses only to see them blown up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I imagine that would be a real uh, heartbreak. <laughs> so everyone's going to be able to make their own camp with a fortress. Yeah, we saw that in the trailer a little bit, moving around the buildings yes, yes, yes. and placing them down. What is the, the goal of doing that? Uh, what's your motivation? Is it just you want to create places where you have the advantage or is there some other strategy at play? So yeah, there's definitely a strategic element. You want to choose the layout that is going to be advantageous to you to protect your territory. And if you protect your territory, then you also need to assault the enemy territory as well. What do you get when you, aside from the satisfaction of just burning your friend's stuff down, what do you get when you conquer an enemy territory? あの、so there are 13 areas in the game divided ac across like geopolitical lines, cultural traditions, and when you invade another area, you can get resources from that area. Hmm. But we'd like to hear Danny tell us more about that. あの、<笑><笑> so, being Japanese, I wasn't really sure how best to divide North America into these 13 different areas, but Danny really stepped in and was super helpful there and had a very interesting conversation with Paul about that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we, there's 13 zones in America, and we tried to define them culturally, right? And so you, by baseball team fandom? <laughs> <laughs> or like um, if you're in Montana, your units will unlock the cowboy hats and some of the Western stuff for your clan to wear so they can have clan identity with territory All and right. also emotional identity. I mean, you can pick your home or, or another one. And in um, we're also going to be building a European map for the European audience with the same kind of cultural 
tags in the uh, assets. And of course, really important, all the multiplayer has a persistent economy, as you can see. So when you ask about conquering a base and, and earning more points to build up your base, unlock more weapons, all the things that make a great, persistent, ongoing uh, multiplayer adventure, so to speak, for you and your friends. There's a lot of, as, as Itagaki-san says, there are a lot of layers of gameplay in the multiplayer and the single player as well. Um, as you can see, there's areas, and like all great combat games, there are multiple ways to approach every encounter, multiple weapons to choose from, um, and of course, this as you're laughing, this yeah, incredible... Yeah, this guy's just flinging himself off the this, second story balcony. Ah, was, yes, and great. when you do that, and it works in single player and multiplayer, and as I said, the acrobatics, the running, getting new points of view on the enemy, and attacking the enemy in new and, and wild ways um, is really just provides a great fun factor and a great sense of fun to this game. Because if one thing this game has is, is a great sense of fun. All right, Danny. Well, Scott, Danny, thank you guys so much. Itagaki-san, thank you for coming on stage and showing us Devil's Third and telling us so much about it. Uh, uh, I, I, I can definitely see that sense of fun you guys are going for in this game. How this? Oh, we got a little more fun to show you here, it looks like. Oh, really? What do you got up your sleeve here? Go on, then he got put in the shoulder. <laughs> oh. And again, really important. All of these moves in, in, as it got are some super gross. Is, I'm sorry, what were you saying? <laughs> they're super fluid, and you can interpret that however you want. <laughs> There's a lot of fluids, but the control set is fantastic. And he's a master of the controller, and playing this game, it feels great. All different levels of players can enjoy the uh, wild campaign. Go, 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 go. Excellent. Well, thanks again for coming on, showing off Devil's Third. Oh, uh, uh, can you tell us when this game's going to be available and when, uh, what, and of course, it's going to be on the Wii U exclusively. We're currently in talks with Nintendo about release date, but we can't announce just yet. Fair enough. <laughs> あの、We're really happy with how the game is, sh is shaping up, but there's just a few more things that we still have left to tweak, like some anime AI and things like that. But it's getting really close and we're excited about announcing soon. Excellent. Well, I hope you gentlemen have a great E3. Thanks again for coming on stage. And folks, we are going to be back here live with Destiny in just a few moments. We'll be with you shortly.